from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, August the 30th, 2021. An Israeli border police officer who was critically injured just over a week ago at the Gaza border fence has died from his wounds. 21-year-old Barel Hadaria Shmueli was shot in the head at close range on August the 21st while he was guarding the security barrier during violent riots by a Gazan who shot a handgun through an opening in the wall. And Shmueli had been fighting for his life at Soroka Medical Center ever since he was laid to rest in Tel Aviv this evening. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett extended his deepest condolences to Shmueli's family, saying there are not enough words to comfort the family in the heavy mourning. Bar-El, he said, was a warrior in his life and a warrior in his death. Bennett is back in Israel after his visit to the U.S. and meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House this past Friday. Bennett tweeted yesterday, we ended a successful working visit to Washington, culminating in a meeting with President Biden. We achieved all the goals we set for the visit and beyond. We agreed with the Americans on joint strategic work to halt the Iranian nuclear race. And we took a significant step in equipping and building Israeli power. The prime minister also noted progress, he wrote, on an issue that concerns many Israelis, the visa waiver and entry into the United States. The Times of Israel cites Bennett upon his return to Israel, calling the Washington visit exceptional. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz addressed Bennett's meeting at a press briefing today with military correspondents. The Times of Israel reports that Gantz told them that the United States and Israel share intelligence information and the cooperation with the United States in this field is only getting stronger. We are working with them in order to establish a plan B and to demonstrate that if there is no deal, other activities will begin, as President Biden said. Gans referring there to a plan B if talks between the United States and Iran regarding the Iran deal do not pan out. And Gans last night met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah, a rare occurrence. Such a high-level in-person meeting between Israel and the PA has not happened in over a decade. Gantz tweeted that he met with Abbas to discuss security policy, civilian and economic issues, writing, I told Chairman Abbas that Israel seeks to take measures that will strengthen the PA's economy. We also discussed shaping the security and economic situations in the West Bank and in Gaza. We agreed to continue communicating further on the issues that were raised during the meeting. And today, Gantz announced that Israel offered to transfer a loan of 500 million shekels, about $155 million, to the PA to help keep it going through the current economic crisis, and that Israel would then pay itself back next June from the money withheld from the PA of the terror stipends that the PA distributes. Terror groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad, by the way, condemned the meeting between Abbas and Gantz Sunday night rejecting any attempts, they said, of normalizing ties with Israel. Turning now to Tokyo, where Israeli athletes continued their winning streak this weekend and into today at the Paralympic Games. Rower Moran Samuel picked up a silver medal in the women's 2,000-meter single skulls yesterday. Swimmer Mark Maliar won his second gold medal yesterday in the men's 400-meter freestyle and won a bronze medal today in the men's 100-meter backstroke. Swimmer Ami Dadaon won a silver in the men's 150-meter individual medley on Saturday and a gold medal today in the men's 200-meter freestyle. Israel now has a total of seven medals at the Paralympic Games. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, August the 30th. At 7 o'clock, it's The Wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, Jewish cinema scholar Eric Goldman speaks with Jewish-Hungarian author and screenwriter Gabor Shanto. 
At 8 o'clock, it's the premiere of Durban Revisited, a series of programs done in partnership with the Neighborth International, marking 20 years since the infamous UN Conference on Racism that instead targeted Israel and the Jewish people. In this first conversation, New York Times columnist Brett Stevens discusses Israel, Zionism, and anti-Semitism with B'nai B'rith International CEO Dan Mariashen. And then at 8.30, Dan speaks with Canadian human rights champion and former member of the Canadian Parliament, Erwin Kotler, who was at the 2001 Durban Conference, who shares his experience and thoughts. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Herbert Block on the Chaim. At 10, the late Ellie Wiesel speaks with Eric Handel at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up next, it's Good Week Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, August the 30th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.